Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 128 where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net that's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net and I'll do my very best to answer it. Let's get right to it because I'm never going to finish the emails as this just keeps rolling along. This one's called Flat Earth Clues, Mark Sargent. Dear developer, hmm, my name is Ender from Turkey. I'm not going to spell that last name because there's some characters in there that I have absolutely no idea what they mean. I was born in Germany and lived since over 15 years in Turkey. If you're interested, I can translate your app in Turkish language as well to German language if you need. I am working right now for an international company where I have to use English, German, and Turkish. Both German and Turkish are my mother languages. This would be my part-time job helping out to spread the word. I have made a research on app reviews on Google Play Store and saw that many people are requesting these languages, and this is very important, in my opinion, to the game and to the players. Sincerely, Ender. That is really interesting. One, I don't think Ender's his real name, and two, I don't know if he's talking about Flat Earth. I can't tell. Maybe? I mean, I've gotten more vague emails regarding Flat Earth. But anyway, I sent him the Flat Earth Clues transcripts either way, which could have confused him if he wasn't into Flat Earth. It's like, what's this? Uh, yeah, if anyone, I, the reason why I kept that in there, it's like, why'd you read that? It's because uh, if anyone wants to, it was very similar to the emails I get from people that want to translate the Flat Earth Clues into a different language. And I've done it for Spanish and Italian and French and uh, African and you name it. So if anyone wants to have it translated and they want uh, the, just, just the transcripts of the clues, by all means, let me know and I will shoot you the transcripts. This one's called No Subjects. Mark, I saw this today and had to show you. Thanks for all you do, Mark. Keep it flat. And yes, it is a Utah license plate, but it's not a flat earth license plate. It says, um, I'd rather be wine tasting and then uh, would be island winery, which is interesting. Uh, you don't see a lot of, you know, the, the frame around the license plate. You don't see a lot of Whidbey Island wineries. And there's a few wineries on the island here. I mean, come on, there's wineries everywhere now. We're all a bunch of drunks. Okay, this one's called Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. Do you still believe the Earth is flat after filming your movie Behind the Curve? Well, that's from Marion Myers. And yes, I do. Absolutely, I do. As a matter of fact, I think it's the biggest Trojan horse recruiting tool that we have. Absolutely. I mean, we sneak into people. I have been there in the theaters with people watching this, uh, both in film festivals and uh, in small groups. And yeah, it, it completely throws them off because for the first 30 minutes, they don't even know it's real. They're in complete denial. It's like, oh, it's a, it's a piece of docufiction. You know, it's just, it's just actors. Like the, the one editor from Los Angeles thought he watched the entire thing and because he had no context and he thought he was convinced that everybody was actors and this was a huge budget movie. Also, I didn't film it. Uh, it was done by Delta V Productions uh, with Daniel Clark, who was the, the lead um, film guy on that, and then Caroline Clark and Nick. It was a really a small team. It was, it was very well done for the, the shoestring budget that they were on. This one's called Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. My name is James. I'm a conspiracy follower in the UK and I have a few questions about the flat earth that I can't quite get my head around. And if you could give me a hand to figure them out, I appreciate it massively. One, if the earth is round and gravity is, by the way, I, every, everyone's writing in, please remember that round can also be a two dimensional object, please. And gravity is holding us on the earth. How can it possibly hold millions of tons of water at the bottom of the globe if we can momentarily defy gravity by jumping, which isn't as big a force as that much water? Yes, I, absolutely right. Uh, the, the gravity, the gravity question, which is how, how water responds very easily to shifts in gravity. If you have any doubt, hold a cup of coffee that's at the brim in your car and make a, you know, a hard left turn. <laughs> Watch what happens. Water moves extremely fast. And which also, by the way, I, something I haven't been able to bring up in a while. Um, if we're talking about centrifugal force, you know, the stuff that pulls you to the outside of a merry-go-round to where you can barely hang on. Uh, if the Earth is moving at a thousand miles an hour at the equator. Does this mean that all the water should pool up around the equator like the rings of Saturn? Not necessarily, but it should pool up some. 
I mean, there should be a huge bowl of water. There, there should not be any land masses at the equator at all. They should all be underwater. Kind of like what would happen with Saturn's rings. I mean, that's the principle of the thing, right? Uh, and, and the North and South Pole should have no water on them at all because they should all just shift to the, you know, there should be this big thing of water around the equator. And then the rest of the water slopes down. That's how it should work. And if you believe in centrifugal force, you can't tell me that gravity is keeping everything absolutely uniform and it's combating the centrifugal force perfectly. Anyway, uh, number two, is it possible the flat earth still has a curvature to it, which would debunk any form of straight line view test as the result would only prove said curve and not that the earth is a globe. I suppose it's possible. I always like the Orlando Ferguson map. I, I think it's a cool map. Look it up. It's from the 1800s. Uh, where it's weird. It looks almost exactly like a roulette table, and then people, you know, conspiracy crowd was quick to tell me, oh, you can't say roulette table. It's like, why not? It's like all, all the numbers on the roulette table literally add up to 666. And I said, you get out of here. That's absolutely true. <laughs> it's like, wow, that is so weird. And nobody knows that. Isn't that cool? Number three, why has NASA not provided video evidence from space of a plane flying directly from the underside of the globe, which would show flying upside down as it comes around? Yeah, it's good. I mean, it's not the best one ever, but it's good. Uh, four, is there any form of expedition plan to reach the ice wall at the end of flat Earth? Any answer? Uh, not right now, no. Uh, mostly because of the Antarctic Treaty. Uh, people would go tomorrow if they could. Any answers you can supply to these questions would be great. Thank you very much for your time, James Saunders. Cool, cool, cool. This one's called My First Email to Both of You Great Lakes Coast Guard Map. Hi, Mark and D Marble. I also get carboned on. on uh, so I get carboned on different emails to groups. And I'm in a group with, uh, you know, Globusters and Jaren. I'm in a group with Patricia Steer. And I'm also in this particular guy always emails myself and D Marble, which is interesting. Uh, even though D Marble lives, you know, not very far from here down in Seattle. Uh, hi, Mark and D. This is my first email to either one of you. I've been following the both of you asking with others for a little over a year now. The map came up on my Facebook news feed today for the United States Coast Guard channel. I thought it was quite interesting due to details it portrays. I know that both of you are constantly finding ways to help show no curvature, and I believe this map profile is how the Great Lakes uh, are made up from Lake Superior to the Atlantic Ocean is just epic. I'm hoping that you can use this info to further prove flatter. Thank you for your time, Ricky Adams. He's out of North Webster, Indiana. And yeah, it shows absolutely level bodies of water in layers going all the way down to the Atlantic Ocean from the Great Lakes. It's very, very cool. In fact, I may use that as a thumbnail if I get a chance. So very cool. This next one's called Teaching. Mark, ever think about teaching English? Since you point out a lot of spelling mistakes, P.S. I'm not a troll. I just think you could become a really good English teacher. Actually, I had considered, because there were several teachers in my family, uh, some some men, some women, that uh, I was thinking about going into teaching, but it's, it is a absolutely thankless job. Uh, look, I grew up in a teacher's lounge and I heard the complaints and they just gotten worse over the years, which is terrible pay. Uh, the curriculum is, is not great and uh, you don't get summers off anymore and, uh, and the kids get worse and worse. <laughs> so uh, no, I, I, I gave that idea pretty quickly. As far as English, no, I've always been fairly good at writing. And because I'm a big, huge, a big fan of plots and, and I poke holes in plots all the time, uh, it just, you just pick up things. And honestly, you know, I hate to say this, but um, practice makes perfect. I, I've been reading enough emails and reading enough uh, text in general over the years. And I see the common mistakes that people make. Really, the, it happened once people started writing emails and getting into computers. You start seeing these, these simple mistakes and spell checker. Uh, it's never really been perfected. So anyway, thank you for that. I mean, I'm, uh, trust me, I'm, I, I, I don't think I could get a master's in English anytime soon, nor would I want to. Plus, here's one more thing, and that is, you probably caught me doing this. I only use words that you would hear on mainstream news, meaning I try to uh, use a vocabulary that even the lowest common denominator would understand. And by that, I don't mean you know, low people. I'm just saying people on the street, just walking around, you know, English majors, people that have a master's, and God help them if they have a PhD, but if they have a master's in English, tend to use vocabulary, you know, what they call them, $3.50 words or $5 words or whatever it is. 
uh, they use those words that people just don't know. Look, if you don't hear it on CNN, don't use the word because you're going to lose a big chunk of your audience, which is why I did the clues the way I did. So uh, I don't know you get your master's in English and you want to spend some of that money. You want to give it back. It's like, look how many words I know. It's like, yeah, but nobody understands you. They kind of understand you. Not completely. This one's called what? Nope, that was the D Marble response. This one's called Error in National Geographic Test. Dear Mark, thank you for making the awakening videos. Uh, in this video, they wanted to prove the Earth is a sphere. However, I think they intentionally did a trick to fool people. I, he's talking about National Geographic. I mean the ones who were on the boat. Check the video at 7 minutes 30 seconds. Look how they hold the striped plane on the water's surface. They could easily raise or lower it if they wanted to, as well as tilting it with their hands. Check out around 7 minutes 54 when they claim the stripes are disappearing due to the curvature. Yep. Their trick is that they intentionally... Uh, soaked the striped plane gradually into the water to fool the audience. Why did they have to hold the plane with their hands? Uh, how can we be sure they didn't lower the plane when it was going further? Do you have a trustable flat earther in the boat? Well, kind of, but he wasn't doing anything. He was just literally there to witness it. <clears throat> if not, you cannot trust this experiment. Uh, as they fool the audience in their magic shows, this is like the magic show that works only f uh, from sp specific angles. You are right, and your mission is true. Create a video, please, and expose their trick. We, we already did. We, we shot this from every angle you could think of, and we released it months before they did. Uh, but, of course, it's National Geographic, so they're going to get more play. But it's all out there. All you have to do is type in salt and sea, flat earth. You'll see all the videos. We should expose their lies with reasons. I am new to this stuff. Oh, that's why. And I'm researching it. Yeah, you'll get it. Uh, check out the same video at 5 minutes 21 that scientist implies people should not question the science. Yep. But science is right until it's proven otherwise. So all science could and should be questioned like what you said on your videos. Do your own research and ask questions. The problem is that those who control media are against the almighty God and they try to te um, tease religions and equal them with superstition. Some of the religious leaders are in on it because it seems they have made a secret agreement with a powerful minority to remain silent against the kind of science that disagrees with their holy books. I read Quran a few times and I could not find anything about the movement of the earth, but there are many verses about the movement of the sun and the moon. I heard from a metaphysical being that you are kind of depressed. Eh, sometimes. Please don't. Uh, I should. Oh, so depressed. Uh, please don't be. We are not alone. We are on the right path of God uh, is guiding us. He told me you are on the right. You are right. And earth is not a sphere. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, your proposed model is kind of like the right model. The rich have all the powers, but they are the darkness. A small candle of truth can kill all the darkness of lies. God is with us and we will win at the end. You are not alone. The world is created for a reason. It was neither an accident nor a game. <coughs> Excuse me. It is early. Best regards. What's his name? Tapio? T-A-P-I-O. Thank you for that. This one's called, Why Not Prove the Earth is Flat to All? Hello, Mark. First of all, I am not trolling you. That's an interesting line. Why don't you or someone just circumnavigate Antarctica and just present the distance traveled? The globe model would give you a value of around 13,000 kilometers traveled, and the flat model would be five, six times higher this number. Another thought I have is why can we not set up a telescope on Newfoundland and see Europe? I'm really looking forward to your response. Kindest regards, Greg Ryan. Okay, first off, circumnavigating Antarctica with a powerboat is going to be tricky because of the Antarctic Treaty. Look it up if you get a chance. Second, and I, I'm not I'm not picking on this guy because a lot of people ask this question. Like, why can't you see uh, a telescope? Um, you know, from a telescope from huge distances, like from New York to Europe, or New York to the UK, or uh, San Francisco to Hawaii. And most of that is because of the thickness of the atmosphere. Remember, what you're breathing is only about 99% transparent. You are not breathing just this perfectly transparent. I mean, yeah, visibly to us, it's almost transparent but it's also a thin version of water. And I know there's chemistry people out there going, no, it's not true. It's like, well, kind of it is. I mean, remember if water is H2O, we are breathing in N4O, four parts nitrogen to one part oxygen. I mean, we're, we're only breathing less than 20% oxygen right now. It's not very much. And most people think, oh no, we're just, we're breathing in oxygen. Everything is around us is oxygen. No, it's not the case. 
that has a thickness to it, and that ha will will get distorted over a distance. So it's it, from here to your computer monitor, it's 99.9% .9 transparent. But then it goes into 90 and 80 because it just gets thicker. It gets, gets layered and layered and layered and layered. To eventually it goes down to zero. I mean, the distortion's ridiculous at around 100 miles. So that's why. Next question. This one's called, let's see, oh, got your text, yep. The, sorry, there's more people emailing me about the Calgary conference that's gonna be happening at the beginning of, or the middle of May. And it's gonna be a little, little conference, but I am definitely going up for it. This one's called Correlating Number Theory with Flat Earth. It looks a little thick and there's a lot of math involved, uh, but I got it from, oh, and it was sent to me and a whole bunch of other people. It's from Chris. Wilkinson to Lisa at sanetown.co.uk. Uh, so we're not going to get into that. Sorry, if there's too much math involved, you guys are just going to fall asleep. This one's called Interesting Unknown Map with a link to a YouTube video. And when I click on it, it says Antarctica Unknown Map. It was posted November 26, 2018. Secret land, Antarctica. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Moving on. This one's called Stephen Nolan Show. Mark, just listened to your latest video on the BBC, The Stephen Nolan Show. Absolutely superb interview. I will try to track it down on the BBC to see if it has been edited. Keep it flat. Adam from the UK. Yeah. Most people don't realize that uh, when I do an interview with somebody, especially it's over Skype, because Skype has the best audio currently. They've got great bandwidth, uh, because mostly because Microsoft owns them now, is that uh, I record it on my side. And so if they chop it up on their side, and I, of course, I recommend this to anyone, record on your side. If you're ever being interviewed, record on your side, because then you'll know what's missing and what's not. Uh, and yeah, I interviewed with Stephen Nolan from the BBC and we even got into vaccines and I don't know if he left that part in or not. Uh, it was actually, the interview went really well and we, I don't think we ran that long, but yeah, if anyone wants to listen to the Stephen Nolan show on BBC radio, uh, you could listen to it on his side and, and compare it with mine and see if there was something missing. But if you want to listen just the unedited version, most of the time you're going to find it on my channel. Next up, this one's called infuriating YouTube video. It gives me a link. The host of IO says hi to you in the video and talks about Jaren's experiment in, in the end. I think it's just a troll video. And, oh, yeah, yeah, information overload. Yeah, they've got 1.2 million subscribers. They published it March 1st. And it says Flat Earthers. And again, it's all in the title. Flat Earthers hilariously, it's not hilarious at all. I, I never, hilariously debunk themselves in new Netflix documentary Behind the Curve. It's not necessarily clickbait, but it kind of is. It's a four minute video where, you know, she's just picking up on the headline. You know, people steal from everybody else's headline and she just picked it up. It's not even her. She's just the on air personality where uh, the, the Jaron and Bob experiment is being uh, hammered on by mainstream media. I think Newsweek was the first ones to take a crack at it again, which is sort of flattering. You know, Newsweek going after Jaron. Moving on. This one's called Latin Dictionary PDF. Hi, Mark. Thanks for the five science questions that you sent to me. I love the degree certificate that you also sent to me. Thank you. Degree certificate. Oh, yeah, right. I've looked in three Latin dictionaries on Google. What, what he's talking about is the uh, Flat Earth University flag. It's not a degree certificate, but it's the Flat Earth University flag. If anybody wants that, by all means, yeah, email me and say, I want the flag, and I'll send you both flags. I'll send you that, and then the one I love, which is kind of like the, the pirate skull and crossbones, uh, but it's an Earth. It's the it's the blank. It's the the Earth from uh, Knowing the movie Knowing with uh, two swords going behind it, and the the credit on that goes out to uh, Nicole Cote, who came up with you know did the sword stuff, and then Karen B kind of tied it all in together. Uh, let's see. I've looked up three Latin dictionaries on Google, and I can't find the word plana. I guess it means plane, as an Earth plane. Is that right? I'm looking forward to next. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, I'm looking forward to next Wednesday's show with you and Patricia in a bin liner dress, LOL. That's John Bailey. Yeah, I did a, a show with Patricia yesterday 
on flat earth and other hot potatoes and she uh, you know she was told because the joke was she could make anything look good you know because she's um, very very attractive super thin and her bone structure is ridiculous and she's like okay you could put her in a trash bag but everyone thought she was gonna like just cut a hole in the neck of a trash bag and stick her head through it and then you know maybe tie it off of the waist no she actually created a dress out of it which was perfectly set a shoulderless dress and and she wore it the entire show there wasn't a single malfunction and it's like only it, she's never made a dress before in her life and she made one out of a trash bag that's the talent that patricia steer has it just stuns me seriously all should bow down all right this one's called curious about flat earth cosmology hi mark i recently learned about the flat earth movement via the netflix documentary surprise before then i of course had heard about it all over the internet just hadn't gotten around to reading about it and the fundamental beliefs therein one thing that troubled me and the documentary never touched on was uh and most flat earth websites i looked for and don't address directly is a simple he, he loves putting stuff in in parentheses is a simple question if the earth is a planetarium like structure what is outside of it uh what space does the earth exist within second i sound it sounded like many flat earthers were postulating that this model is operated by someone or a group of someone's as though the planetarium structure is an actual mechanism could you address this uh anyway i just wanted you to know i write these questions out of sincere curiosity i'm not trying to disparage the flatter theories in any capacity i just find this stuff fascinating thank you for your time lorelei and uh, yeah it, okay one what's out of what's outside of this place i don't know maybe more of these maybe an endless universe that's really what i like anyway an endless universe uh maybe it's a laboratory maybe it's god's desk maybe we're just a, a paperweight on god's desk I, I just don't i just don't know uh as far as who built this place again take your pick it's it's one of two things and when it comes it's definitely wasn't us so it's either an advanced civilization or a uh, or the divine take your pick one, one or the other moving on this one's called truthuniversity.com hello Mark, I noticed you you own truthuniversities.org. No, I don't. <laughs> Just letting you know that truthuniversity.com, that's where there's a hyphen in it, is now on sale, and you can leave an offer with us if interested. I wish you a great day. That's from Aaron. Uh, okay, truthuniversities.org. Why would I own that? Uh, if it was flat earth related, sure. Like in closedworld.com, I got that. But that's the only one I got. Uh, and somebody else owns MarkSargent.com, which is unfortunate because I'll never be able to get that back. Moving on. This one's called Flat Earth Clues. Hi, Mark. I just finished watching your original Flat Earth Clues video. I have to say I, that I'm a bit floored. I'm actually a bit of a conspiracy guy myself, but I've always found the concept of a flat earth laughable. Now I'm not so sure. I started down the path of questioning what we have been taught as humans with uh, OOP art, oh, out of place artifacts. I'm sure you are familiar. That led me down a road of JFK, 9-11, vaccines, climate change, the moon, the pyramids, megalithic structures, the space program, the Big Bang, carbon dating, evolution, the list goes on and on. Having studied all these topics, I've come to the conclusions that we don't know what we think we know. And those who do know are not telling us the truth. Our perceptions have been hijacked for so long. To me, the most compelling aspects of your presentation have nothing to do with whether or not the Earth is flat and everything to do with historical references that are unexplainable. For instance, the Admiral Byrd explorations and interview, the flight patterns, the ban on Antarctica, the historical translation from flat to globe, transition, transla transition, and all the weird things governments have done over the years. I do not need to decide whether or not the Earth is flat to be bothered by these things. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, anyway, thank you. The subject is certainly something I will be exploring in much more detail. Sincerely, Mark McGuin. M-C-E-W-E-N. McGuin? I'm hoping I pronounced that right. I'm not the greatest at pronouncing names. I, when people um, say names like newscasters, and they just rolls off their tongue, and I'm thinking, wow, are you doing this live? Because I would just butcher it. I, I just like stare at the teleprompter and be like, Naga, Naga, not going to work here anymore. All right, moving on. That's a movie reference. We'll request for permission to use name in college project. 
Hello, Mark. I'm a university student who is currently working on making a small computer game for a class. After watching the Netflix documentary on Flat Earth, I decide to base the game around the idea of a society that fully believes the Earth is flat, like in history, and a man who is trying to prove otherwise. I was wondering if I could get your permission to use your name within the game. Yes, 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 yes. Everybody, you don't have to ask for my permission. Most of my stuff is Creative Commons license anyway. You can take my videos and do whatever you want. Uh, the professor has also mentioned, I've never thrown out a copyright strike ever. Now, I've thrown out an identity strike at, at somebody, but that's a whole other thing. You can't just put some guy in jail and would name Mark Sargent and say, oh, this is the flat earther, Mark Sargent. You can't do that. Um, the professor has also mentioned that he would like us to publish this game later in the semester. So it would be in the public atmosphere at that point. I thought I'd reach out and ask permission of respect. For your name and your cause, let me know what you do think and I can elaborate or send you the finished project prior to publication if you're interested as well. Thank you for your time and consideration. Andrew Wood. Yep, yep, and yep. You can use whatever I have. Nothing is copyrighted at this point and I don't know if I ever will. I mean, I'm, some production company might in the future, but I'm not going to anytime soon. Uh, this one's called Space X Falcon 9. Wow, Mark, just wow. The fakery is more than obvious. Wait till Jaren gets a hold of this. Yeah. SpaceX is just terrible. They're really, really terrible. And I think what he was showing was the uh, the airlock sequence where they're where they're supposedly in, in an area where there's no atmosphere and they're wearing short sleeve shirts and gas masks. And and they've got so much skin exposed, it's unbelievable. You gotta understand that as you get closer to a vacuum your blood the 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 your blood will boil because the boiling temperature will drop to such a degree it'll drop to almost room temperature and even if it's not close to being a vacuum you're gonna feel it i mean uh scuba divers know this Ugh, don't want to get into it but yeah it's a horrible video this one's called flat earth mark i'd like to express my valid recipes for flat earth i question everything especially when it's american owned i have knowledge that i carry for what I don't know, what purpose this knowledge comes without study, without any research. Give me a topic and I can give you my reasoning with an elaborate answer backed up with my own philosophy and diagrams. On the spot is my comfort zone. I'd like to hear back from you. Give me a topic, a theory, a story, or perhaps the Bible or even the chicken and the egg. This will be all my own. I want my knowledge to be heard. I heard some things you addressed and it made my mind turn to a fuzzy static. Hearing someone with unknown knowledge speak and word every sentence with my mind already pre-approving never happens. This is a very unique connection. Flat Earth minds are the epicenter to the truth of the world. And that's from Chris. Okay. Cool. Glad, uh, glad, glad it resonated with you. Awesome. This one's called, it's a big forward. Hi, Mark. I rocked the boat a bit today. Oh boy. This guy wrote a massive letter and he looks like he sent it to a whole bunch of professors out in Canada. And yeah, he was, yeah, he was writing to school boards and yeah. And it's called, um, affluent. Well, I, I won't even read the title. But uh, yeah, so f there are there is some flat earth activism out there that's not on the street. It's people that are writing emails to educators. So that's really, really cool. This one's called, how can I help? Hi, Mark. I am newly coming into this world at 42. How can I help? That's from Jake. Well, Jake, spread the word. That's what I'm encouraging everybody to do right now. Uh, but be tactful. Remember, the first rule of flat club is that you do not talk about flat club. So just make sure when you're talking to somebody about it that they're receptive to the idea and you might want to kind of feel them out with the moon mission first because if they absolutely believe in the moon mission, go rah-rah team, wave the American flag, then they're probably going to be really resistant to Flat Earth. Uh, this one's called Dallas Conference. Hi, Mark. Has the hotel or conference location been selected for the upcoming event in Dallas? Thanks. Yes. Uh, you can look it up at fe19.com maybe. Uh, just look up Flat Earth Dallas Convention. You'll, you'll find it. It's out there. I haven't done anything to it yet. Remember, it's at the end of the year. We're only in March. We got time. Uh, but but yes, the, the hotel has been picked, as far as I know. This one's called... I listened to your interview 186 on the BBC radio. 
Uh, Mark just had to say you did great with the BBC radio interview this week. You work well under pressure. Thank you for representing us. Sincerely, Sean T. Very welcome, Sean. Uh, yeah, that's interview 186. I know we're up to 191 and 192 and 3 will be in the bag tonight. Uh, 86 was uh, uh, the BBC radio, BBC 5, I believe. And he was getting hostile towards the end. He, he you know, was accusing me of being a snake oil salesman, doing it for the money. And again, why, why wouldn't he say that? Because the documentary has gotten a lot of play. It is trending on Netflix. Somebody is making money off of Flat Earth now. Uh, of course, it's the producers of the movie, not us. Uh, you know, If you're doing a documentary, most of the subjects, that's the whole point. You, you, if you're paid to be a subject in a documentary, it's not a documentary. It's a movie. And in this case, yeah, it's a doc. You know, it is a movie and a documentary, but no, nobody got paid for this. In fact, we were, <laughs> we were putting them up. I mean, Daniel was, you know, heck, Daniel stayed at the the director stayed at the guest house up here, uh, you know, and he stayed in Airbnbs. They were shoestringing it. And they didn't have the money. If they had to pay people, there would not be a movie. Anyway, thank you for that, Sean. This one's called Bug You Once More. Mark, I hope your weekend is off to a great start. I just want to ask you if you have been impacted by YouTube censorship on Flat Earth videos. Has this YouTube has YouTube ever shut down your channel on any videos? Thanks, Doris. D-A-R, Doris? D-A-R-I-S-S-E. Doris. Uh, she's writing a paper. Uh, I think she's at UC Irvine, and she's writing a paper on Flat Earth. Uh, no, no, um, the censorship, because remember, and I tried to explain to her, YouTube isn't censoring videos right now. Uh, not, I mean, yes, there was the adpocalypse, which is a whole nother thing. You look that up if you get a chance. Uh, but when it comes to YouTube, they are going to recommend flat earth videos less because we were saturating everything for three years. We were constantly just bombarding people and they were getting kind of tired of it. So YouTube wasn't exactly hurting us by, by saying that. Plus, again, I, I think I talked about this in an interview recently, which is if you're going to censor us, why make a public worldwide announcement that you're going to make those recommendations less? You're doing that for the corporations. I mean, some, some advertisers, uh, sponsors on your channel or on the, on the network, on the YouTube network, wanted uh, something public to be announced. You don't have to do it. If it was something secretive you just don't you just do it you don't tell anybody and they did the opposite they said oh yeah by the way we're going to recommend flat earth videos less out of all out of all the topics on youtube they picked three and one of them was flat earth and and people you know all of a sudden the mainstream media it's like really you know, flat earth videos less okay and then all of a sudden you know pe people's like oh i should look into flat earth before we can't find them and then of course the grapevine turns it into uh, they're going to ban Flat Earth videos, and they've already banned them. Then all Flat Earthers will be killed. Uh, this one's called Round or Square Flat Earth. I believe we live on a square flat earth. I also think Facebook is subliminally telling us it's flat. Recently, I noticed that when I had a friend adversary, we were in a globe on flat earth. Check it out, bro. Okay, what's interesting about that is that's the title of the email, and there's no content. So, And it's from 5050 Dude. Okay, this one's called Angular Momentum, and it was sent to Jaron and myself, because I'm on some of these emails. Uh, it's from Mike, and it says, Info, disk flat earth, gravity uh, is greater than acceleration, gravity is greater than torque, angular momentum force is 15 degrees an hour, flat earth plane, disk, north axis. And he sends us a bunch of images. By the way, thank you for... Uh, putting the Flat Earth Clues book on your, what looks to be an outdoor table. Uh, it was a cool image. Uh, and and then he's you've got some diagrams here. YouTube gyroscopic precession and gyroscope physics videos by Eugene. Uh, some Russian name at 1 minute 20 seconds. Info. And that's from Mike Prokopow. Huh. It's cool. Thank you for that. Uh, in fact, I may use that thumbnail. You know what? I'm going to use that thumbnail. That's kind of fun. Media projects. Put that in my to-do pile. This one's called Beyond Reality Radio. Uh, Mark, will you and Patricia be... Hang on here. Let's, i got to read this. Uh, let's see. Jason and JV asked me to reach out to both of you returning to Beyond Reality Radio. They recently watched the documentary Behind the Curve on Netflix and were interested in having you both back on to discuss. And yep, so Patricia and I are going to be doing a follow-up interview. Go figure. 
uh, on Beyond Reality Radio, and that will be Wednesday the 13th at 9 p.m., and I will put it up as soon as I can. This one's called Flat Earth Assessment. Hey, Mark, I'm a 16-year-old in New Zealand. I'm doing a little assessment about Flat Earth versus Globe, and I really couldn't find anything good on Google about the Flat Earth stuff. Really? I mainly went on YouTube because it helped. Well, okay, look, if you go into Google, again, remember, there's other buttons there. You know, there's news, and then there's videos. Google has other categories. But a lot of people don't even know that it's there. They just search in Google, and in, and they just it defaults to the all section. But there's other... Click on the little categories. Google has everything. Um Sorry, a uh, little because I helped and it'd be easier also about not finding good stuff. Just couldn't find a good source because of this. I don't want to represent one side unfairly. So I was wondering if you could answer me some questions or tell me like three to five main things that flat, earth, flat, flat earthers believe in, if possible. Two links and some proof too. Oh, is that all you want? Thanks, Russell. Yes, I, I'll send you three to five things uh, that flat earthers believe in as far as flat earth proof. If I had it, I'd be the most famous person in the history of civilization. This one's called YouTube vid. Hi, Mark Wan to let you know I'm watching your vid of they are hiding God with the greatest lie ever. Yep, that's, it's not my vid. It is a, it is the Flat Earth Clues with a different rapper on a whole different channel, uh, which is fine. You can do it if you want. It's very interesting and truthful. I have questioned the ball earth in my own mind for 30 years, ever since giving me my live to the creator's son, Jesus the Christ. I was just too, it was just too hard for me to believe we were hurling along through the cosmos. It put the creator too far away after seeing the flat earth vids on YouTube and reading the verses given in the Bible. I'm now a believer of the flat earth. Keep up the hard work you are doing of informing people. It needs to be told. Thanks again, Denny. Very welcome, Denny. This one's called The Verticon File. Hello, Mark. Hope all is well for you. My Flat Earth novel, The Verticon File, has been selling well, and I wanted to reach out to you again and get your feedback on it. I love watching your videos on YouTube as well as those by Patricia. I hope that if you've read Verticon that you've enjoyed it. If so, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks, Brian. I will try to read if I get a chance. There's, I just don't have a lot of time. I mean, I'm lucky. I'm actually doing... I have a chance to, to do some of these because my interviews today aren't until later. Uh, to do some emails. I'm not going to be able to do everything. And eventually, I'm, I'm, we'll just see how much I can do. Uh, let's see. Chris Pontius says hi. And if you haven't checked out Chris Pontius's models, he makes some fantastic Flat Earth, flat earth models. He's also in the documentary. You can go to flatearthmodels.com. This one's called Thanks. Mark, I was just listening to your interview with the BBC guy. He sure was a pissant, wasn't he? Uh, you did such a good job at maintaining your cool, even though he got very annoying and disrespectful. Well, that's part of what he does. You know, terrible childhood, I'm sure. I came to Flat Earth reluctant, reluctantly, like you, about nine months ago. I have learned a lot from your videos as well as others in the community. I've made some kind of comment in discus about NASA fraud. I've watched a funny thing happen on the way to the moon and someone replied agreeing that the earth was flat. I snapped back that the Van Allen belts don't mean that the earth is flat. And then decide one or two links to see what that was all about. That did it for me. I like empirical evidence and so I was flabbergasted by Pythagoras' non-working ball earth formula. The fact that we have Polaris, sundials, and other things that we can observe like the sun rays, close, and flat water. I studied for about eight months and then I recently red-pilled my husband and he actually believes me. I had put a bunch of screenshots from many videos into three PowerPoint presentations, and he saw them over a two-week time period. The first one was about NASA fraud. That was what I found out about in 2015 and just showed on... Uh, he just stewed on that, occasionally making snide comments about NASA to him. He probably thought I was crazy. Then I started making comments about how the sun was not 93 million miles away and how... That was so obvious that the rays coming through the clouds, he really thought I had lost my marbles. He completely believed my show <clears throat> on NASA fraud, mainly because of the wrong shadows on the moon. Yeah, but there's so much more proof from their other frauds like the ISS. I think he was pretty disappointed about NASA. At the end, I urged him to watch that video. It took him a week to do it. 
And then a few days later, he asked to see the second PowerPoint. I had started out with Admiral Byrd and introduced Antarctica and the firmament slowly. I could see the light coming on in his eyes, and it was really cool. I had to stretch it to three just because there was so much evidence of the flat Earth. I threw so much at, at him that he's not doing any independent research. I guess I covered it all. Or maybe he's just as curious as I am, or not as curious as I am. <clears throat> Excuse me. I owe a lot to you. Thanks for the hard work you do. I haven't decided yet on red pilling anyone else. I'll be known as that lady. What made you decide to really go public with this? As a side note, I'm surprised that Bart Sabrell is not a flat earther. Bart Sabrell hates us um, because he consider he thinks that flat earth takes away from his research and not not in an embarrassing way. Flat earthers are so crazy that anything even remotely tied to flat earth like Bart Sabrell's work would also be crazy. So he's going to denounce it because he's embarrassed by it, uh, which is fine. I mean, that's a natural reaction. Uh, hopefully he'll cave in eventually, but if he doesn't, that's fine too. Um, what made me to go decide to go public with this? Uh, frustration more than anything else. And I really didn't think it was gonna get that public. Certainly not mainstream interviews, definitely not a documentary that was gonna end up going everywhere. Uh, and radio shows and a book and all this stuff. No, no, I put it out there because I wanted an answer. And I don't want to be famous. I want to be right. Moving on. This one's called Astronomy. Hi, Mark. I live in Eugene, Oregon. Would you like to come down and debate a University of Oregon astronomy professor on Flat Earth? It could be a live streamed event. Best William. And he gives out his phone number. Sure, happy to. In fact, Eugene, Oregon, I'd probably drive. I mean, yeah, you're gonna have to pay for some sort of expenses. I'd stay down there at a hotel at least one night, uh, and gas would be nice because uh, it's too short to fly. Because I'd have to fly down to. I mean, I suppose I could take a Sea Tech flight to Eugene, but that might actually be more of a pain in the ass than it's worth because I'd be in the airport for two hours, and by that time I'd be halfway to the to the university. Uh, but yeah, happy to. Of course, I mean it's part of my challenge thing. I'd lo love to do it. This one's called Flat Earth. Go figure. Hey, Mark, my name is Patrick from Ireland, and I'm 19 years old. I love conspiracies, and lately I've been fascinated with the Flat Earth conspiracy. I just find it so hard to believe someone can think the Earth is flat. You seem like a nice down-to-earth person who you could chat with, and you don't seem stupid. The whole topic, personally, makes me scratch my head. I hope you find the proof you're looking for. I can't bash anyone for believing anything. I've been pretty open-minded to the idea of flat earth, but it doesn't work. Personally, I find it so much harder to understand how a flat earth could exist. Question. Here we go. It's in his head now already. Could you send me any other videos to maybe convince me otherwise, please? Do you believe that the planets in our solar system exist? Are they flat also? Question. What makes the globe theory so unreal to you? Congrats on being a... on being a Netflix show, by the way, I'll be having a wonderful day or night regards Patrick. Have I written back to this guy? I did. And I sent him the uh, Flat Earth Shortness list for new people to kind of get him down that road. This one's called Flat Earth Terra Convex. Hi, Mark. How, how's it going? I've just got in contact with the documentary Terra Convex. What do you think about it? Can you make a video about it so that other people are aware of it? Uh -huh. That those experiments have been done. Also, I think we need to force other scientists to repeat those experiments because... That is the core of science, right? Repetition of experiments. Good luck, Jay. Yeah, the 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 South American flat Earth documentary that was done a while ago now, uh, all of a sudden is resurfaced because we got Netflix attention. You know, Netflix is everywhere, and that's what they wanted to do. And again, they had their documentary was good for the first hour, but then it just fell apart in the second hour. Uh, and by the time they brought in aliens, it was like, wow, you really should have just stayed on the road, colored inside the lines, the flat earth lines. And uh, I mean, it's OK. It's, it's out there. I'm not going to promote it, though, because the second hour is, well, it's not good. This one's called a question about proof. Hey, Mark Polly here. I have a question short and sweet. Why isn't the long distance photography footage not considered proof? Was a, nail, was a nail in the coffin for me. In fact, there's more nails now than wood. Ah, that's funny. Actually, I could, I don't mind steal that. I'm going to have to call in one day on TFR. Cheers, bud. Pollination. P.S. Ever heard of liquid sun theory? No, I have not. But yes, you're right. Long distance photography is, uh, is a wonderful proof, which is why it's my number one thing that I bring up to people. It's like, look, long distance photography. Something I did not talk about in the clues, and everybody's been doing it. So... Mm. 
moving on. This one's called Fascinating Graph Zeppelin Around the Flat Earth 1929 Trip. And it was sent to, and if I could get it to actually pop up, it's sent to Patricia and myself. It's called Graph Zeppelin, what I just said. Uh, the narration is based on diaries, letters, and articles by Lady Grace Drummond Hay, one of the 20 passengers on the 1929 Around the World trip. My first time viewing this, and I was captivated by the history of how this flight made headlines even when while the airship was presumed lost in a Pacific storm. Yeah, airships have a real problem because they are so big and so susceptible to wind because they just don't have enough horsepower to fight against it. Even though they're aerodynamic, they just don't have enough horsepower. I mean, it's just a big balloon with some fans on it. Uh, my father was 18 years old and my mother would have been eight, 16 while this event was making worldwide news. We know this was a flat earth trip and the image that I posted reflects that. Uh, it is our responsibility responsibility to increase believers in the flat earth. Sincerely, Steve. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting trip that they took. And uh, uh, yeah. Fascinating. 1929 Zeppelin traveling around the world. I mean, it was really kind of a northern trip, but still. Kind of interesting. This one's called A Question About Proof. Hi, Mark. Nope. I just did that one. He sent it twice. This one's called Hey There. Uh, so, Mark, I just watched the one documentary on Netflix and wanted to say that you're very well spoken. I've looked at the bunch of the stuff you posted, and honestly, I don't agree with you because, well, I don't need to. <laughs> oh, let's see where this is going. I think you're a pretty valid human being. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go down from here, I guarantee it. And you seem like a pretty nice guy. That said, I'm really only saying this all because I wanted to say that you and Patricia... Oh, this is that nice letter. Uh, he So he's going a different way. Basically saying, okay, because you and Patricia seem to have a pretty awesome chemistry with each other. And while watching that documentary, the charisma between you two is plainly obvious. I know there was hinting that you two might be a thing or whatever. But if you aren't, and it's something you'd like to do, I hope it works out because you both are terribly adorable together. I hope that it all works out for you, man. And from one globe head to you two, I wish you the best of luck. Thanks for your time. If you end up reading this and uh, if possible, that chicken noodle soup looked super great if you want to steal it for me from your mom. Have a great life, Wesley Paul Evans. Uh, yeah. Uh, again, remember, I, it, it's funny because, you know, Patricia downplays it a lot from, but this was a snapshot of 2017. And when we were shooting the documentary, I would just gotten back from Canada. I had spent a year up there uh, with a lovely flat earth woman who was way too young for me, but very nice nonetheless. And no, no, I, Patricia, I, I look on Patricia as if you've seen the movie Shrek before the princess turned into an ogre. That's how I kind of see myself and Patricia most of the time. And I've used that in thumbnails. Whereas, look, I do not photograph well. I know this. I, I used to be a lot cuter when I was younger. And I, fine, I have some charisma and charm. That, that, that goes a little ways. But, but Patricia is so freaking photogenic, it kills me. I mean, you know, she has to take like, I don't know how many selfies with us just to get me to even look remotely human. You know, it's, it's like the bells, the bells, Esmeralda. It's, seriously, it's, it's horrible. And uh, so, yeah, I look, at, look on, on Patricia uh, like a Disney queen. And some of that was caught on film in 2017. I, I let that slip where, uh, you know, I want to spend more time with her because she's easy to spend time with, uh, even though she's a Disney queen. And if she had a wand, she would probably turn you into something unnatural. Moving on. This one's called Flat Earth Almost Convinced Me, but two questions. I'll, I, I get close. Hi, Mark. Just finished watching your Netflix documentary. Really never heard of it. Me and my girlfriend loved it. It really got us thinking. We've been discussing in detail the Flat Earth theory on our road trip across Australia. Uh, she is totally convinced. I just came across two things I need clarification on. We just watched the sun set on the west coast of Australia over the horizon. If the sun circles the disc, as you suggest, would the sun not appear to move closer and then further away rather than set over the horizon? Well, yes, it does. If you look at the right videos, it will show that. Specifically, where we stood on the western tip of Australia with no visible landmass, shouldn't we just see the move, sun move further and further away? Yeah, yeah, actually you do. But when you kick in atmospheric lensing, and I know David Weiss calls it a few other things, it makes the sun get bigger on the horizon, like the moon is bigger on the horizon. When you look at that, it's like the moon looks the biggest right next to the horizon because of the atmosphere you're punching through. Second one, seasons. If there's no hemisphere with the relative position to the sun causing seasons, how would we explain these seasonal rotating weather patterns in the scenario of a flat earth? 
Seasons are because the sun and the moon, well, it's mostly the sun. Uh, well, actually, the moon helps, though. Uh, mo don't move in the same path every time. It's like a needle on a record player. Thank you so much for taking the time to read our questions and for truly opening our eyes. Hashtag it's flat. Regards, Sean and Mel. Thank you for that. That's awesome. This one's called Airplanes Levitate. Dear Mark, I've been doing research on airplanes and found that they do not have any jet fuel tanks in their wings when they fly to using a bumblebee levitation. Eh, I don't know about that. Uh, go to YouTube and videos and take a, take a look at jet fuel hoax. I appreciate it. Look, one of the side effects of flat earth is extreme open-mindedness. Love that you're into that. Uh, but I do believe that fuel is used. Now, how much fuel is a whole nother thing. This one's called Hey There. Nope, that's from Patricia. Disney Queen, always be nice to her. Seriously, don't, don't, don't make her mad. It's like the 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 elf queen in Lord of the Rings. Who, you know when Frodo was gonna give her the wing, the ring. Yeah, watch that scene. Apply it to somebody with red hair. This one's called Flat Earth Model. Hello, Mark. I have posted to several of Flat Earth channels my question below, but have received no responses. Perhaps you can help me out. All right, let's try. I've been thinking about the flat Earth, the way the models, the sun, like the hovering light source. Specifically, when I observe sunrises, I see a top. The top of objects like trees and buildings get illuminated first and then the bottom at sunset the bottom of the objects go dark how does this happen with the spotlight sun it seems it would light the bottom of the objects first during sunrise and darken the tops yep 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 i never see that through anywhere am i misunderstanding how sunlight spot sunlight model works no look it's not as simple as just a spotlight and or light bulb in the sky it is not as simple as that the sun is instanced and this is so hard to explain to people unless you know something about software, so I'm not really going to try. Other than the light effects that you see can be tailored to do just about anything. I know this because we've been doing it in simulations for the last 20 years. Am I absolutely saying that the world is a simulation? I'm saying that it's really likely. And by that I mean look up the double slit experiment and how it... In fact, there's a video I, I put on my channel called... The, and you're going to have to watch it a few times to get it. Which is a, the double slit experiment and or simulation theory and flat earth. How they tie into each other. Because if it's flat and it's enclosed... Yes, it's mechanical in nature, but even those mechanics are built on something. Uh, and again, we could go into the matrix of the 13th floor. Uh, God is a programmer. Plain and simple. In the beginning, there was the word. And what does that sound like to you? The code is word. In the beginning, there was the code. What's the difference? God's a programmer. Moving on. How many, how many more can we do here? Genuine question. Mark, I want to start off by saying I both respect your character and the hunger for truth you have. Though our conception of what the truth is in the case of the shape of the earth differs, it's for that reason that I'm emailing you about what I believe to be a solid counterpoint to the flat earth argument, and it's one I pose in an attempt to present a contradicting viewpoint. To present it, I have to set up the frame for my argument. I live on a barrier island just off the coast of Florida called Pensacola Beach, in the community named the same. The entire island averages somewhere around six feet above sea level. On the other end of this island is a community called Navarre Beach, and the two towns are separated by several mile length stretch of sand that is mostly flat and unobstructed in any way. My argument is this. On a clear day with high visibility, one can travel across the Bob Sykes Bridge from Gulf Breeze, Florida to Pensacola. At the bottom of both ends, you can look across the bay that separates the island from the mainland to see the high rise condominium. Oh, here we go. Of Navarro Beach, stretch of I know what he's going to do. Uh, descending, you can watch these same structures disappear. Okay, it's atmospheric lensing. We did not invent it. It's there. You want to call it refraction. You want to call it Fata Morgana. You want to call it atmospheric distortion. Look, I, I know. I know you see this. And people see it with boats. And they see it with lighthouses. But believe me when I say it's not what you think it is. So, no. And best wishes, Colin. I, I, I get it. It's, it's one of the oldest things ever. Again, the, the most common ones that people throw out are, your boot, are um, boots. Boats. I'm not Canadian. Moving on. And the emails keep rolling in. As I've been, as I've been doing this email show, I have eight more emails. Uh, kills me. Hi, Mark. I'm a Melbourne-based IT architect 
and have an honors degree, I may end with this one, an honors degree in electrical and electronic engineering specializing in antennas and radio systems. Many years ago, I designed some phased array antennas for mobile phone applications at 2 gigahertz. I'm now fascinated by the latest military weapons and how they operate in our enclosure. Having believed that most of the world believes after months of research, I am now entirely convinced that the flat earth, but have only one person I can discuss it with. I have a few questions for you. Oh, apparently it's me. Okay. Why is the sky blue? <laughs> if the answer is now clear, uh, if the answer is the answer now clear, it is this the color of the firmament. No, I'm saying it's the default. No. Okay. The sky's not blue at night. Uh, and so why is it blue during the day? It's the display system. Uh, and or the water behind the firmament, uh, or just the projection system. Yes, projection system. I probably should answer before he finishes his question. I'm thinking now that the military discovered many years ago that the firmament will reflect electromagnetic waves, and hence the use of harp and other energy weapons make good use of this fact to attack any location on Earth. Any thoughts? Yes. Absolutely. You try to maximize whatever. If the firmament can't be broken through, maybe you can use it to your advantage. I would. Uh, three, after all these years pondering the FE, what bigger questions come up for you given it's clear we are living in an enclosure and being poisoned on a daily basis? I think given the sun gives us so much life and nature works so perfect as it is that the system was created with good intentions, but it is attempting to be hijacked, hijacked by dark forces. Yes, that's not my biggest concern right now. My biggest concern is how they're going to release it. It's we're, we're getting to the point where there's so many people talking about this that they're going to have to address it directly. I mean, really directly, like press release directly. And I'm just wondering how, but you can't do it just cold. You got to, you got to warm up the audience to that. So how are you going to do it? There's going to be some subtle cues uh, be beforehand and some not so subtle cues because remember the average person on the street, they, they just know flat earth as a concept. They don't really know the details of it. Four, is it true that other well-known YouTubers are threatened if they acknowledge the truth of FE? Uh, no. No, not at all. Uh, YouTube has been a safe haven so far when it comes to Flat Earth. Uh, I, I don't know really anybody who's... I have yet to see a Flat Earth video that was just taken down because of Flat Earth. I don't care how big the channel is. Five, ever thought of making a list of easy tests, including geographical positions and landmarks anyone can do for each major city in the world? Uh, no, because it would take too long. Thanks for reading, mate, and keep it up. And that is from Mark C. So thank you for that. We will end on that one. Plenty more emails to come. And thank you for everybody that sent in their questions. Remember, you can shoot your stuff to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. And until next time, stay flat.